Hi, welcome to this lesson. This lesson is about climate responsive design. We've been talking about energy efficiency in a building and climate responsive design is one of the critical design that you can take into account to build a building that is highly energy efficient. Now, can they do it? Yes, there are different case studies around the globe which actually have taken climate responsive design to build their buildings. Now we will be looking at four different case studies in this lesson. Now the, the buildings in climate responsive design follows Atkinson's classification of climate. Atkinson's classification came in 1953 and he classified the buildings based on, two, based on the climate observed for the building into four different types. They are cold, temperate, hot, dry and warm, humid. So this uh, naturally covers uh, almost all of the different type of climates that are seen around the world and it is one of the simplest system that can be taken to build the building in response to the climate that is seen where the building is planned. So the first case study is the Himoji office building in Shimla in India. Now if you see in this uh, picture you can see that the building is quite interesting and it has got certain interesting factors. Now the building is built in a way so that it accommodates the cold climate in Shimla. So Shimla has a cold climate throughout the year so the building has to be constructed so that heating and cooling requirements can be maintained appropriately. The features of this building includes a solarium which is south faced and the building is built in a kind of a 3D um, um, directional way so that it can capture sunlight at every available directions and also you know, you can see that there are light shelves, viewing windows, air heating panels, etc. at different parts of the building. There is also working solar chimney on top and also an insulated roof to minimize the heat loss from the building. Now, the, uh, even though it has got a lot of uh, good features and even integrated solar energy onto the building design, the main challenge of Himoja building is that it requires heating all throughout the year. Um, it is a really good example for a cold climate building where climate responsive design is taken into account. Now let's look at the second example. This is the example for a temperate climate. The building is located in Melbourne in Australia. This is known as Council House 2 or CH2 building. Now Melbourne as a city had a target to reduce the energy consumption and um, as a sustainability um, goal to use 50% lesser than what it used to before. Now this strategy was sort of put into action by building the CH2 house. Now the, uh, the nature is taken as a main inspiration for this building and as we look at this picture here we can see that there are different features embedded into the building such as water initiatives uh, for sh uh, shading and light as energy initiatives, energy systems, indoor energy, uh, indoor uh, air quality, etc. One of the key features of CH2 building is that it has a whole a complete air change every hour. So again these uh, kind of systems are not quite found uh, everywhere but it indeed shows that it can be made possible. So that's where CH2 actually um, building stands tall as a good example for climate responsive building which can be adopted to any other place which has a moderate climate. However, it has got its own challenge because for a city like Melbourne, it can even have four seasons in one day time. So again, you know, we need to in incorporate those factors into the building design. Now let's look at the third um, case study, which is for a hot, dry climate. Now the example taken here is from India, uh, which is a torrent research center in Ahmedabad. You can see the picture here and the features given on the left hand side of the picture. Now the building is been built in such a way that it has got a lot of shafts uh, emerging from the building. Now these are used as ventilation whereby the stack effect, hot air is you know kind of removed from the uh, from the building and then cold air is gushed into the building through the user spaces or the space just in between the um, main uh, shafts upward and the kind of user spaces below so you know there is a constant um, uh, air circulation involved and using the solar chimneys the air is kind of transported 
from the building to the outdoor. Uh, the main challenge uh, is the kind of uh, variation in the external temperature as it can get really, really hot. So, you know, the cold or the cooling environment required for this building can be higher in extreme summer. The final case study is for the warm, humid climate. Now, this uh, building, as you can see, is the Umoja House. It's located in one of the poorest countries of the world in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. This is the Foreign and Commonwealth Office in Dar es Salaam uh, for Netherlands um, and uh, Germany together. And they, were the, um, they are the users or the occupants of the building in itself. Now, this building actually showed that even in countries, you know, um, uh, countries like Tanzania, sustainable design can be taken into account and buildings can be constructed. Umoja House is a seven-story building with 7,000 cubic meters of space where, you know, there are user spaces um, uh, placed quite discreetly behind the wall so that extreme climate doesn't uh, affect the environment. Uh, of the occupants inside. There's a thermal buffer zone, external solar shading, and also a photovoltaic, which is um, sort of uh, attached to the roof of the building in itself. So in all these examples, we have seen that there is an integration of ventilation, good renewable energy design, etc., which is in response to the climate um, where the building is standing. So I hope you have understood how climate responsive design can play a key role in understanding the climate outside and bringing the most natural comfort inside the building as well. Thank you.